Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Threadbanger. We are here on the red carpet trying to score some more celebrity interviews for this week's Oscar week. Hey, there's Brad, Angelina. Hey, Threadbanger.com. I'd love to talk to you a little bit. Okay. All right. It's Sean Penn. Hey, oh my goodness, we love doing milk. milk. There he is. Hey, come, come Nothing. Over. Uh, this isn't uh, this isn't working too well. Oh, Rob and Corinne. I can totally get them. Rob, Rob, Corinne, come up, come up. Hey guys, how's it going? It's going great. How's your uh, your Oscar night going? Hey, I mean, look at this place. I'm I'm starstruck. This place is awesome. Corinne, you look fantastic tonight. Who are you wearing? <sighs> this little thing. I made it myself. It was actually a viewer question. I think it was Kawhinas, Thick Thread, Rainbow, Serendipity. Nice and shiny. A whole bunch of people. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know everybody here and everybody at home is probably wondering, are you going to give us a little tutorial? Tell us how you made it. You bet. Uh, it's actually going to be this week's lesson. We hang out with couture designer uh, Kenneth King, and he shows us how to make it from start to finish. You definitely don't want to miss it. Well, thanks so much for coming over. The show's about to start, so you better get in there. Get in there. Thanks, you guys. Hey, it was great talking to you. Good seeing you. Good luck with the interviews. I can't believe we met them. Starstruck. Little starstruck over here. Hello, I'm Kenneth D. King. I'm a couture designer in New York City. I have a book that just came out. It's called Cool Couture. It's available at all fine bookstores. Today, I'm going to show you how to copy an existing garment without taking it apart. Since a lot of you thread bangers liked Corinne's cloak that she wore a couple of weeks ago, we've decided that that is going to be the project. Before we actually start to take the pattern from the garment, we need to put some marks on the garment. What we want to do first is we want to find the center back. From here, I am going to do a thread based with white thread. We have our center back seam, our center back fold, which is a grain line. We have a cross grain fold here, and we also have the stitching lines for the sleeve. So here we have a lengthwise grain, and we have a crosswise grain. Finally, I will get the grain lines on the hood. You need the lengthwise and crosswise grains on all the pieces for the next step. We want to mark a lengthwise and crosswise grain on the organza because we're going to line up those marks with the marks we made on the garment. This is where the fun begins. What you're going to do is lay the organza on top of the garment section and line up the lengthwise and crosswise grains with the thread basting that you put in. In each quadrant, I'm going to smooth the fabric out so that it lays flat and then pin around the outer edges of the garment section. When the fabric is nice and smooth, then you know that you've got an accurate read on the piece. And now, you take a pencil and outline each garment section. We're pinning the lengthwise grain of the body front to the organza, but you can see here is the seam lines of our hood. Really, everything comes onto one piece of organza. You also want to make sure that you mark any button placement. We have all of our information to copy this coat, and it looks right now like this. This may seem a little confusing, but I'm going to show you how to turn it into a paper pattern. We just take a tracing wheel, and just bear down and go over the seam lines that we marked on the organza. You need to do this for every pattern piece in, in garment section that you have in the garment. I'm going to choose to do a 5 8 inch seam allowance on here. Hey, what's up, Threadbangers? All right, so if you don't know yet, we have an awesome promotion going on with two of our favorite companies. You see, we got the uh, Threadbanger Janome sewing machine over here, but really, what's a sewing machine without the thread? Our good friends over at Coates & Clark Thread Company are hooking you up with 50 spools of dual-duty XP thread to get you started with your new machine. The rules are simple. Buy yourself a Threadbanger Janome sewing machine. Send us the receipt. I don't care how you get it to us. Scan it, send it snail mail, and then bam, you're walking away with 50 spools of thread. For all the details, head on over to the Threadbanger blog and check it out. So now it's time to put your pattern pieces on the fabric. Since it's Oscar time, we are going to use black velvet to emulate the cloak from the Duchess. 
we're also going to line it with a black satin so we have a nice play of texture between the two. When working with velvet, one of the things you want to be aware of is the nap of the velvet, the fuzzy stuff on the velvet. It angles generally down. If you ignore that, what's going to happen is you're going to have a piece that looks like it's two different colors. What we're doing now is we're putting the fabric front sides together. Here we have our hood, straight of green, is parallel to the selvage. Now we can pin. You want to keep the pins in the seam allowance so that you don't scuff the nap of the velvet. When I'm pinning, I want to run the pins right on the seam line, like so. This is actually what's called pin basting. We have the velvet cut, now we're going to cut the lining. And satin is one of those fabrics, like velvet, you worry about the surface getting damaged. So again, with satin, you're going to pin all of the pins into the seam allowances, not the body of the garment itself. And for this, get out our trusty rotary cutter. We're going to pin the center back seam, just like we did for the velvet, because we are going to sew that as well. First off, let me introduce you to the walking foot. The walking foot is a foot that literally lifts up and steps over the upper layer of fabric to feed it through the machine. When you're sewing with velvet, when you're sewing with spongy fabrics, when you're trying to match a pattern, you don't want the little bit of shift that happens when you have a presser foot that slides over the top layer of fabric. We're first going to be sewing our lining with a straight stitch at the standard 2.5 millimeter stitch length. The velvet sews with a slightly longer stitch, which is like a 3.5 length, and you want to sew it with a slight zigzag. When pressing with velvet, you have to be careful not to crush the nap of the fabric. There are some tools that you will actually read about in my book, Cool Couture, that will help you to press velvet successfully. It's called mohair velvet. It's an upholstery fabric, and the the nap itself is really, really stiff, and so it doesn't flatten down, and it makes an ideal pressing surface for velvet. You just want to give a gentle steam with the iron. You don't set the iron down onto the fabric. You just want to hold it above. The first step in pressing satin is you do what's, what is called press as sewn, which is you just run the iron over the row of stitching. What that does is it sets the stitches into the fabric, it evens out the tension, it just makes everything happy. Then, with a smooth seam roll, I'm gonna open up the seam and lay it over the seam roll and press on the back like so. Notice I'm not using any steam. You just wanna press the seam flat. Now we're ready to pin both sides of the hood together. As you can see, I've left the neck seam open so we can turn this right side out. We're actually going to still use the same machine settings as for the velvet because the velvet is on one side. Now we turn everything right side out. Okay, here we are. We have the length of mohair velvet against the pressing table. If you don't have a length of mohair velvet for pressing velvet, a really good quality terry cloth bath towel will, will be a good substitute. So for the rest of the cloak, you're going to cut out the body from velvet and from satin. When you're constructing, you will sew shoulder seams, front pieces to the back pieces on the velvet. That's one separate piece. Cut out and do the exact same things to the lining. From here, you're going to put the entire piece together. You'll need a big area to do this. Laying the velvet face up, laying the lining pieces face down, and you're going to pin from the neck here all the way around the perimeter back to the neck here. Once you have all of this pinned, you sew it, trim your seams down to about a quarter of an inch, Turn everything right side out through the neck seam here and do a soft press again as I did over here. Finally, you will pin the cape to the cowl, the hood, at the neck seam. You will sew everything on the neck seam so that everything is joined together. Now, a buttonhole and a button for a closure. 
and you look fabulous for your Oscar party. Hey, that's it for Threadbangers Oscar Week. We had an awesome time, but it's uh, about time for us to get out of here. I'm Rob. I'm Corinne. And uh, we'll see you next week.